let's talk about rigid bodies and conservation of momentum. We can say that the initial linear momentum of an object is equal to the final linear momentum of an object if the sum of all the linear impulses acting on a system is zero in a specific direction. When it comes to angular momentum, the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum if all the angular impulses about the center of mass or a fixed point is zero. This is a lot easier to understand through examples. But before we get there, we will need to discuss a few things to keep in mind. Conservation of momentum is an extension of impulse and momentum. You will need to know how to find linear momentum of rigid bodies and angular momentum of rigid bodies. In the previous video, I talk in detail about how to find these, so if you forgot or need a refresh, please see the description. For some questions, you will also need to know how to apply the principle of work and energy and the conservation of energy. There are videos on these topics as well, so again, please see the description. Lastly, for some questions, you will need to find the mass moment of inertia. I show some equations here, but you can find many more by searching for them online. Without further ado, let's get started with our first question. In this problem, we have a gymnast who lets go of the bar fully stretched, and we need to figure out his angular velocity when he's in a tucked position. To solve this problem, we can use the conservation of angular momentum. First, we need to find the mass moment of inertia for both positions. When the gymnast is fully stretched, we can use the slender rod equation. The mass is 75 kilograms and the length is 1.75 meters. Let's solve. Now when he's tucked, we can use the equation for uniform circular disc. The mass is the same, for the radius, it's 0.75 meters divided by 2 since in the diagram we're given the diameter of the circle. Now we can write our conservation of angular momentum equation. We're saying that the initial angular momentum about the center of mass is equal to the final angular momentum about the center of mass. Angular momentum is the mass moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. So let's plug in what we know. We know the mass moment of inertia at the beginning and the angular velocity is 3 rads per second. Then on the other side, we have the mass moment of inertia at the tucked position and we're trying to find the angular velocity. Let's solve. So when the gymnast is in the tucked position, he has an angular velocity of 10.89 rads per second. Let's take a look at this problem where we have a wheel and we have to figure out the minimum angular velocity required for the wheel to make it over the step. The wheel is rolling without slipping, so right before the wheel strikes the step, the velocity vector is straight ahead. We can figure out this velocity by multiplying the angular velocity of the wheel by the radius. When the wheel is now on the edge, so it's about to go up, the velocity vector is pointing like this. And that velocity is also angular velocity times the radius. Note that the two angular velocities are different, they are not the same. The initial angular velocity does not equal the final angular velocity. Let's also calculate the mass moment of inertia for this wheel using the radius of gyration given to us. For that, we can use this equation. The mass is 50 kilograms and the radius of gyration is 0.125 meters. Now we can write our conservation of angular momentum equation about point A. Since this equation is not about the center of mass, we need to use the expanded form of the angular momentum equation. So our expanded equation would look like this. We actually need to find one more thing, which is the perpendicular distance from point A to the mass times velocity vector, represented by r. Initially, the distance is 150 millimeters minus 25 millimeters, so that's 0.125 meters. For the second distance, it's the radius of the circle, which you can see by the line I've drawn. One more thing. We can replace the velocities in the equation with the velocities we found before, giving us an equation with just angular velocity. Let's do that, and at the same time, let's plug in all the values we know into this equation. Let's simplify further. Now we have one equation with two unknowns. We actually need one more equation to solve this problem, and for that, we're going to use the conservation of energy. We will do each section separately, and then add it up. First, kinetic energy the initial kinetic energy can be found using this equation. It's important to understand that this initial kinetic energy is actually when the wheel is about to be on the step. The velocity vector is not straight but at an angle. We're writing our conservation of energy equation from that point. 
So we are not using velocity 1 for initial velocity, we are using velocity 2. For the very same reason, our angular velocity is also the second angular velocity. As before, we can replace the velocity with the other equation we found. Let's simplify. Next, we have final kinetic energy. In this case, the wheel has made it over the step and stopped. In other words, it's resting. So the final kinetic energy is zero. Now we have gravitational potential energy. For the initial gravitational potential energy, let's draw the position of the wheel right when it's about to go up the step. Now let's draw a datum through the center of the wheel. Since the wheel is on the datum, there is no displacement, so gravitational potential energy is zero. For the final gravitational potential energy, we need to draw the wheel on top of the step now. Notice how there is a vertical displacement of 0.025 meters. In other words, the wheel went up 0.025 meters. So we can figure out the gravitational potential energy using this equation. Because the displacement is above the datum, it's positive. The mass is 50 kilograms, and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's solve. Now that we have all the pieces, let's plug it into our conservation equation. Let's solve for the angular velocity. This is the angular velocity right as it's about to go up the step. But what we really need is the first angular velocity. That's the angular velocity the wheel strikes the step with. So we just need to plug this value back into our first equation. So the wheel needs to strike the step at A with an angular velocity of 3.987 rads per second for it to roll over without slipping. Let's take a look at this question where we have a rod and at the end of each rod is a disc. Each of the discs are given a clockwise angular velocity and then we have to figure out the angular velocity of the rod after both discs stop spinning relative to the rod. First, let's figure out the mass moment of inertia for the disc. For that, we can use this equation. The mass is 4 kilograms and the radius is 0.15 meters. Now we can calculate the mass moment of inertia for the rod. The mass is 2 kilograms and the length is 1.5 meters. Next, we can write our conservation of angular momentum equation. We will assume clockwise to be positive. On the left side, we have the initial angular momentum of each of the disks. On the other side, we have the final angular momentum of the disks. In fact, since the disks have stopped spinning, this angular velocity is the angular velocity of the whole system. Then we also have the angular momentum of the rod. We need to use the full equation since both wheels at the end will create a linear momentum. Since there will be two linear momentums, it will be two times the length to point C from points A and B multiplied by the mass times velocity of each of the disks. Again, since the wheels are no longer spinning, the angular velocity we are considering applies to the whole system. Let's plug in the values we know. Let's simplify. We have an equation with two unknowns. We can actually write the velocity in terms of angular velocity. Since the rod is rotating about a fixed axis, the velocity can be written like this. The distance from each of the disks to point C is 0.75 meters. So let's plug that in. Now we can solve our main equation by using this equation. When the wheels have stopped spinning, the rod has an angular velocity of 0.09 rads per second. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to rigid bodies and conservation of momentum. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.